Hey guys, how are you? It is, well, it's 10 p.m. on a Saturday night, but whatever. I felt like making a video. I just want to talk to you guys about an experience I had today. I was at a hairdresser's and I walked in and there was this lady there. So I started chatting to her. And then while I was speaking to the hairdresser, I was telling them about, you know, the things that I had been through, the things that, you know, Victorians had been through and, um, you know, said a few truths, talked about the election, uh, talked about the censoring of uh, world-renowned doctors. Um, I talked about how I was in prison and you should have seen the look on her face because, of course, I don't look like a criminal because, well, I'm not a criminal. And she was like, oh, my gosh. And I told them about, you know, the police coming to my house. I told them about the police, told her about the police interrogating my four-year-old nephew while his parents weren't looking, asking where, where does your auntie sleep? You know, trying to find where all my stuff was. And she, she looked at me and she said, oh my gosh, we're living in a police state. And I was like, well, yeah, we have been for at least two years during COVID. And she was so shocked. The poor woman was like, actually, she said, I feel stupid. I feel naive. And I said, it's not your fault. Like, if you don't know about Rumble, if you don't know about Telegram, then you're not going to see any of this stuff because people like me are kicked off Facebook. Usually we're kicked off Instagram and YouTube and things like that. And she was like, but why? You're just explaining a different side of a different opinion and a different set of facts. And I'm like, well, yeah, I know. And she was like, I feel like I've been living under a rock. Like, how did I miss all this? How did, how did I not know that these things were happening? And I told her about Canberra. I told her that 500,000 people were at Canberra and that probably 500,000 people were at the Kill the Bill um, march in, in Victoria. And she was like, really? That happened? I told her about the rubber bullets at the shrine and how the police were shooting people in the back. I told her about people losing their jobs, people being discriminated against. And I, I, I likened it to the, the black America where the black people couldn't sit in the front of the buses. They couldn't go to public libraries. They couldn't go to the swimming pools, etc. And I said, well, that's pretty much what's happening with the unvaccinated people. And she was like, yeah, that's pretty bad. And we talked about how the Russian people were being discriminated against because of Putin's actions, which isn't fair, by the way. Um, it's ridiculous to fire a Russian person just because their, their, their country's uh, leader is invading. Like, it's not their fault. They didn't have a conference with Putin and say, yeah, let's do it. Like, it's not the civilian's fault. It's ridiculous that this racism is happening and I completely condemn any racism towards Russia. But anyway, that wasn't the point. But towards Russians. Anyway, the point is, is this poor woman walked out of there like, oh my gosh, like, I, I, I didn't know this stuff. But you know what? Like I said, it's not her fault. It's really not her fault. We've been conditioned to listen to the mainstream media. We've been conditioned to not look anywhere else. And we're scared to look outside of our box because then we have to start really thinking about things and it's pretty confronting. So I just, I'm sharing this story because if you have family and friends that are on the verge of figuring all this out, be patient with them and just drip feed them stuff. Don't overdo it. Don't go too far, okay? And, uh, you know, make light of it. Like, oh, yeah, well, you know, yeah, this has been happening. And, um, you know, it's okay that you didn't know. Now you do. So welcome to the team. You know, welcome to the community because we're here for you. And and we don't judge you for, for not knowing this stuff. Like, it's not your fault. And um, we love you the way you are. And, um, you know, I, I hope that I I changed her life a little bit or... or, or or opened her mind to something else. I mean, she might actually think I'm crazy. I don't know. But it didn't seem like that. She was really listening to what I was saying and um, didn't really offer any um, negative feedback or, or um, pushback against the things I was saying. And, you know, it feels really good to tell someone the truth and to use your own story. You know, obviously I have probably one of the most extreme stories out there, you know, because when you see me and I say, oh yeah, I was in prison um, because the government doesn't like what I'm doing. Um, it's pretty shocking for people. Um, that's a pretty good way to wake people up. So maybe you could show them a picture of me and be like, did you know that this girl was in prison for 22 days because she stood up for human rights? Yeah, because that's the kind of government that we have. I don't know, if you can use my story to help, I'm happy for you to do that, obviously. 
Um, but yeah, it was a really interesting experience and I, <laughs> she's actually on Instagram, so she might even see this video. I gave her all my links to all my, my, uh, website and things like that. And also Morgan's as well. And I told her about Rumble and Telegram and <laughs> this is so, she's gonna, she's gonna, um, have a whole new world open to her. And I also warned her that her friends and family might call her a conspiracy theorist and things like that. And I told her the joke that, uh, what's the difference between a conspiracy theorist theory? What's the difference between a conspiracy theory and the truth about six months? Yeah, that's the joke. <laughs> anyway, you can use that, please use it. Um, you know, we aren't actually crazy. Uh, we, I don't think the world is flat and I don't think people, um, are lizards or, or any of that stuff. So, um, really we're not conspiracy theorists at all. Uh, in fact, the mainstream media is reporting on things that we've been talking about for two years. The liberal and nationals are using our slogans for their political campaign. So yeah, like I, I don't, I'm not going to go around saying I told you so, but you know, we have been saying this for a long time. But anyway, I want to give you guys encouragement that now is the right time to talk to people. Now is the right time to just drip feed, say, oh, isn't it interesting that um, there are articles about how masks don't work? Or isn't it interesting that the statistics say that 91% of um, deaths in Australia from COVID um, were for pe from people who had like two or more comorbidities and um, the average age of death from the virus is actually higher than the average age of death. And um, a lot of the comorbidities were old age sort of symptoms. So anyway, just drip feed that sort of stuff, guys. The time is right. The federal election is coming. We've got to start educating people that um, the government can't be trusted, that they've lied to us, that they've hurt us, and they just want our vote. And that's why they're acting a bit different now. So remind your friends and family, pretty much 95% of everyone I speak to doesn't want to vote for the majors. And this woman, she wants me to tell her who to vote for. So does my hairdresser. So does the lady I bought lunch from yesterday. Um, so does pretty much everyone. The dentist, the nurses at the dentist want me to come back with flyers for them. Like, it is the right time, guys. Get out there and start talking to people. I actually have a survey that I've created and I'll put it in the link. And the point of the survey is not to collect data. The point of the survey is just a way to start conversation with random strangers. Because if you walk up to someone and you just want to talk about the election, they're not going to want to talk to you. But if you walk up to them and you're like, oh, I'm doing a quick survey. Um, I'm not collecting any personal data. Um, do you mind if I ask you a few questions? People like that because they kind of want to be involved in some sort of survey. They think it's like an honor or they want to be like a part of some sort of statistic. Um, but really the survey is not about data. It's just about starting communication. Have the conversation. It's like, oh, you know, aren't you sick of the government, you know, taking over your life, telling you where to go, what to do, who to see, what business to go into, what to wear, what to put in your body, you know, the only way that we can stop that is to vote the majors out. That's right. Tell you what, 95% of people are going to want to hear what you have to say and they're going to want direction and they're going to want education. So um, if you guys are up for that, I'm going to put the volunteer form in the description as well because we're going to do education on how to talk to people, um, how to approach strangers, um, the education on elections, so preferential voting, how to vote above the line, below the line, upper house, lower house. Yeah, I know it's like, there's a lot, but guess what? We're not taught this in school. So it's our job to teach people. So we're going to do that. See you guys. Good night.